Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adventures in Dolls, the United Federation of Doll Clubs YouTube channel. Today, our program is an interview with a UFDC member, doll artist from Hawaii. Her name is Lisa Sosa, and she goes by the nickname of Tutu which she tells me means grandma in uh, Hawaiian. The name of our program today is The Healing Power of Dolls and Tears. Before we get to the program, be sure you leave me a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. you don't miss your next adventure in dolls now let's get to the interview hi tutu i'm so pleased you could join us today everybody i would like you to meet tutu susa she is a thank doll you. artist tutu thank you for joining us today thank um, you for having me I wanted to ask you, have you always made dolls? I have not. Actually, I started when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. The first doll I ever made. Oh, very recently. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, shortly after the pandemic hit, um, Hawaii locked down really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, they grounded the planes and it was a ghost town. Uh, it was really scary for everyone, even in the, the mainland, the U.S. mainland and around the world. We were frightened, not knowing, you know, what was happening. And I was glued to the news, watching every day. And uh, I just started getting uh, sad you know, seeing all this, all this stuff going on and someone would tell a story and it would make me cry or someone was crying. So I decided, decided to turn off the TV and I took a pallet in my doll room and my two little dogs, we went in there and laid down and just spent the day with the dolls. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I just, uh, Mina, this is Mina. And she kept commanding my attention. Uh, and one day, something just a defining moment came over me and said, make dolls. And the rest is history. I'm making dolls. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody who really inspires you? Well, uh, now that I am a doll artist, uh I'm new to the trade, so I don't know a lot of other artists out there yet. I haven't, you know, I'm kind of stuck here on this rock. <laughs> and I haven't been able to travel to the mainland and go to a lot of shows and meet people. Like, eventually when I retire, I'm going to do more of that. But I can say that I respect all of them. Uh, I know what labor of love goes into creating a doll. I can't wait to meet some more doll artists. Tell us about your dolls. Okay. Well, they're basically just like Leo Moss, his his manner, his style. I got some uh, composition white dolls and uh, made a paper mache mixture and started sculpting. Uh, the heads are paper mache? Well, it, they're the armature. It's It's... The paper mache is sculpted over the composition doll. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. just like Leo Moss. I set the eyes. I get uh, antique glass eyes. And then I take uh, a composition doll and I begin the sculpting process of the head oh. and hair. And, you know, I, I don't even own a sewing machine. I'll put that out there. I don't know how to sew. And... And so learning to make a doll, you know, I can remember the first time after, you know, Leo spoke to me or 
you know, it was just a message from above to make dolls. I, I sat down at my kitchen table. I got the materials. I made the paper mache. And I thought, how in the world am I going to do this? <laughs> I, I had no clue. So I said, okay, Leo, you got to make a deal with me. You told me to make dolls. Now you have to tell me how to make them. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. He did. <laughs> So that's that's the process, and and then I paint them, and I I find antique doll clothing or period clothing. You know, like I said, I have no clue with a sewing machine. Uh, that's going to be my future project. I would I would love to learn how to sew, mm -hmm. and uh, but for now they they get uh, clothing that's already made. I love my little Valentina very very much. Yes, yes, um, I do. So Leo Moss kind of inspired you. He did. A little bit. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. He did a lot. Actually, his his story, uh, you know, his, I think mainly his story of loss, but he overcame that loss and, you know, uh, shed light, found a positive way. And, you know, I say that what we do now matters. It matters mm. today and it matters tomorrow. Um, you know, the example, Leo, he something he did 150 years ago, it made its way to Hawaii. And to me, I'm a Southern girl, but I'm living in Hawaii. Mm. And um, it made its way to me and and uh, was my guiding light through the darkest period of, you know, our country. How does your cultural background and childhood make you and your artwork unique? Well, I was born in Northwest Arkansas, oh. right on the, yes, I'm from Arkansas, right on the Oklahoma, Arkansas border. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Cherokee Indian blood. Yes, my father was Cherokee. And uh, there were always art shows and uh, we had a dogwood festival in the park and and I always loved art. I painted a lot and I still paint today. Uh, and I had doll collection. I would I would buy dolls. My grandma would buy me dolls, but I never had thought about the idea of creating a doll. Mm -hmm. But uh, so the art was always around me. You know, Indian art. Uh, and uh, I would go out in the summertime. Uh, grandma's house and I'd play out in the woods and build a fort and you know just make my own little creation <laughs> so <laughs> I was always doing something <laughs> we talked about the heads being paper mache mm -hmm. uh, what about the bodies it's a cloth torso and then it's the old you know composition uh limbs the, oh yeah. yes yes Okay, yeah. the way my Valentina is. Okay. Yes, yes. She was just a little baby doll from the 30s. And um, she said she wanted a makeover. So do you always just go in your doll room and hang out with the dogs when you're trying to find an inspiration? <laughs> I, I do. You know, it's a peaceful place. And uh I just, I love dolls. I've mm -hmm. collected all my life. My grandmothers started my collection when I was about five. You know, they would travel abroad and bring me a doll from their vacation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a wonderful place to be. And uh, a lot of peace there. <laughs> now, before you begin a project. Okay. Uh, do you have a, a face? or something in mind already, or does it come to you as you sculpt? Right, yeah, it, it actually, I don't usually have a face in mind. Um, now, one uh, uh, friend asked me to make a Marilyn Monroe doll for her. She oh. She's a Marilyn Monroe fan. So that was actually the first doll that I sculpted that was the image of, you know, someone. Right. I get inspiration from 
uh, people of the pandemic and stories of the pandemic because my dolls are pandemic art. Um, you know, in, in early 2020, when the U.S. sent uh, the naval ships Comfort and Mercy, I was watching TV that day and it really struck a chord with me seeing that U.S. naval ship pull in the New York Harbor and the Statue of Liberty, you know, the, the freedom that, mm -hmm. you know, we're blessed with here in our Sorry. country. Two nurses. I'm going to sculpt two nurses. And I did. I sculpted Mercy and Comfort. But this is Comfort and Mercy. And oh. I made them and I gave them a little bench as if they were done with their shift and they were outside, you know, consoling each other, yes. having a little chat, giving each other comfort. They they both have one little tear as if they're they're strong women, they're strong, you know, nurses, and they're wanting to hold back that pain, but that one little tear is, is slowly coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but so sometimes I do that. I get inspiration from TV, you mm -hmm. know, from the pandemic mm -hmm. and make um, make my dolls. Well, I know that several of them have tears. Yes, yes. Yes. And why is that? Okay. And um, I'll preface it with that. I understand um, some prefer not to have the doll with tears and sadness. They feel it's sadness. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, um, that that little droplet of water that comes or a lot of water that comes from deep within our soul mm -hmm. and that little tiny tear duct that releases that, you know, right there in our eye, which is the window of our soul, it's a powerful healing tool. And it releases that stress, it heals the heart. Um, you know, we get um, the endorphins, you know, to help us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always say that after the rain, the rainbow and the sunshine come out. Yes. So, so the, the, the sad dolls, you know, are expressing sadness, but, or they're crying, but also we cry tears of joy. You know, there's, there's a few meanings behind it. And mm -hmm. I just, uh, I love the sad dolls and I love the happy dolls mm -hmm. uh, equally. Yes. Me too. Me too. I just thought it was very interesting when I saw uh, that you made so many sad ones, you know, and why I, it's very, yeah. interesting. you know, the pandemic, it was sad. I just did what I felt. Uh, a lot of the dolls just, just happened to come out that way. I think I took my emotions and put them into the dolls. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, when, when we had a good day, you know, when the numbers started going down and we had a good day, then I, then the happiness came out, you know? <laughs> yes, 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 I do know. What do you think the best piece of advice is that you've ever been given? Uh, make dolls, Leo Moss. Yes, he spoke <laughs> to you. Yes, yes, and wear sunscreen, my dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the creation of the doll do you enjoy most? Okay, it's that... That spark, that split second when you, you know, go from a bowl of paper mache to sculpting and then um, the, it, it comes alive almost, you know, you all of a sudden you're looking at this little face and you know you've created something. It, it's just that split second spark that makes it all worthwhile. Okay, so you're holding Maya? This is Mina. 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 Uh, this is Mina, yes. And she is uh, the first doll that was uh, brought to a uh, UFDC show. Uh, she's got her first place and her fourth place. Uh, she won first place at Louisville, Kentucky in 1973. Can you see that? Yes. The previous owner, Myla Perkins, took her there and um, entered her into the, the contest. Mm -hmm. And I, I won Mina 
And I also won Pansy. She's down here. This is Pansy, her sister. And she's the flirty, ornery girl, you know, and Nina's got two little tears. Would you like me to share the story of Leo Moss in case some of our viewers? Yes, in case some viewers don't know. Okay. Are those Leo Moss dolls? Yes, yes these those are, are Leo Moss original. Okay. okay. Now, this is oral history. Uh, you know, it's passed down from person to person, doll collector to doll collector, mm -hmm. because there's no known records of his existence. Oh. Uh, but now, that wasn't unusual in the 1800s. You know, records didn't exist uh, like they do today. And so some doubt his existence and they think it was a concocted story. And others believe in him fervently. And um, I believe there was a Leo Moss. And I believe that he made these dolls. Mm -hmm. He was a handyman by trade. And then at some point in his life, he began making these magnificent dolls. He uh, made dolls in the likeness of uh, family members and uh, children in the Macon, Georgia area. And what I've heard is that he would make these dolls for the children to give them a doll uh, that they could relate to, that was ethnically correct, and that they could have a normal childhood. Like an old composition doll, he would get these parts from a New York traveling salesman that would come down to Macon, and, and he'd bring Leo doll parts and eyes. And then Leo's wife, Leanne, would make uh, the doll clothing. And if the doll had a wig, she'd take locks of the child's hair and make a, a human hair wig. Things were going great for Leo because uh, word got around in Macon how talented he was. The families that he worked for in the handyman business began commissioning him to make dolls uh, in the likenesses of their children. So, I say things are going great. And then the rain clouds came rolling in. Leo's wife, what we call a romp in the hay, had a romp in the hay or a rendezvous with the toy salesman. Yes, she had an affair <laughs> and uh, left Leo with the four children. And she took Mina. Leanne took Mina. Oh. Yes. And... Um, that's why it said there's two theories that Leo started making dolls and would put tears on their eyes because he was sad. He was grief stricken. And uh, the other theory is that when he was sculpting the doll, he would, uh, the child, if they misbehaved, he'd say, OK, now, if you're crying, you're going to get a doll with, you know, a crybaby doll. Mm -hmm. You better smile if you want a happy doll. <laughs> So there's two theories and no one really knows, you know, uh, his True. mindset because it is oral history. And so um, in the 70s, a lady by the name of Betty Formas, uh, her and her husband, they were antique dealers. They would, uh, they're from northern Michigan. They would travel down south in search of antique finds to take home. And they ran across uh, Ruby Moss's antique store she had there at their homestead. And they went in and looked at the antiques. Ruby was uh, Leo's oldest daughter. And uh, Betty didn't see any antiques she liked, but she saw all these dolls sitting around. These two were part of it, the original. And she told Ruby, she said, Ruby, I'm interested in buying these dolls. And uh, Ruby said, oh, no, I can't sell those dolls. They're family heirlooms. My father made these in likeness of our family members and children in the Macon, Georgia area. And uh, Betty said, well, if you ever want to sell these dolls, please call me. So they exchanged contact information. And a few years later, uh, Ruby did reach out to Betty and, and she was getting up in age and she said, I'm ready to sell the dolls. And uh, so uh, Betty bought about 40, 30 or 40, and she took them back to her Michigan Doll Club and sold some of them. And that's how the story 
became alive again. You know, no one knew about Leo and the dolls until that time. And then uh, Leo is said that he passed away in the 30s and he's buried in a pauper's grave in Illinois. No one really knows where he's at, but uh, museums and collectors and uh, have kept his legacy alive. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm I'm trying to do as well. Share his his life story, and uh, he's been a gift to me. His life story. Um, I, so I have to have you show some of your dolls. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got you right here next to me. Let me let me sit Mina down here. Okay. I've got. Um, one little girl that I'm keeping myself. I just love her. She's so cute. Her name is Maisie. And oh, she's, yes. smiling. she's smiling. Can you see her? Yeah. Uh, I just <laughs> love her. And uh, she's got little curly hair. Mm -hmm. And I got her a little pink gingham dress. And she's just a doll. And then I have Damara. Is right here. It's the beautiful doll. Let me get her. Come here, Demora. Okay. So, okay, come here. This is Demora. She's very pretty too. Oh, yeah. She's got those heavenly eyes that look up at you. And she's got such a gentle spirit about her. Mm -hmm. Her hair's pearly. Oh, it is beautiful. She's got the big baby doll. You know, she's got the turned up toes. <laughs> and, uh, she's got a little matching panties and a nice little chunky leg. She's just the most adorable little baby. Now, I know with um, Valentina, my doll, you put uh, her name on her chest. Yes. Did you do that with your other dolls as well? I do. I do. And that's, uh, Leo did that. Uh, there's some that don't have that on there on his, but, um, they might've been taken off or come off. You know, we, we just don't know, Yeah. but I do, I do mark them that way. I, I put the name tag and then I, I put my little artist tag, you know, it's, it's an art mm -hmm. doll mm -hmm. and I sign it and I number it. People want to learn more about you and your dolls. Where should they go? What what should they do? Okay, um, they can find me on Facebook. It's uh, Leo Moss Dolls by Tutu T U T U on Facebook. They can follow me there, or they can uh, reach out, you know, in an email. Uh, I don't have a website yet, but uh, they can email me at poignantpaper at, at gmail.com. And uh, I do have a, a Ruby Lane store. Also, it's it's Poignant Paper, uh, Tutu Sousa. And I have uh, some of my dolls there. So what do you think people are going to see from you in 2024 and beyond? Are you are you still into just creating the same way or do you, do you have visions of something else? I have a lot of ideas that that I want to pursue. I'm going to continue making my Leo Moss dolls. I want to try and make some Native American mm -hmm. Indian dolls mm -hmm. uh, and possibly enter some art shows. And so uh, they'll just have to watch me and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed meeting you so much. Is there anything else that you want our viewers to know or that we forgot uh, to talk about? Well, I, I just hope that my dolls bring everybody happiness and, and lots of love. I create from the heart. We all have loss in our life and, Love conquers all. Well, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate you so much taking the time to come and talk to us. I'm very excited for everyone to see all of your uh, dolls. Thank you so much. <laughs> Aloha from Hawaii.
Tutu says, and I quote, Tears are a powerful healer, releasing stress, sadness, anxiety, and joy. Our salty tears are cleansing, like the ocean lubricating our eyes, reducing stress hormones, and removing irritants. Pent-up emotions can cause illness, fatigue, and pain. Crying can stimulate the production of endorphins, our body's natural painkiller. Tears heal the heart and help us process loss. So go ahead, hug your doll, and release those tears. Unquote. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the interview with Tutu Sosa. Thank you, Tutu, for your very kind interview and your support of this channel. I sincerely appreciate it. Hey, if you're not already a member of UFDC, I'd like you to become one. Uh, simply go to the UFDC website, ufdc.org, and go to membership and fill out the form. And when you do, be sure you tell them Karen sent you. Thanks so much for watching today. We do appreciate your support of our channel. We'll see you next time.